Everybody, we are going to be starting stuff up here in a second. We are just making it so that uh, we have the player meetings and stuff like that. So, yeah. Just giving you a heads up. We'll be back in a little bit. People are... Da -da -da. Alex, you want to work the mouse? When you say start the round... Yeah, one, one second.
Audio should be off. <laughs> it's just big. It's just getting started. Let me see on the stream if you guys can hear me. Hopefully you can. We just got started. So we got round one. We have Caleb Pruitt on the right playing uh, a Prissia list he calls Sexy Beasts. And Alex Muhick on the left playing 28 Regalia. Um, just let me know if, uh, if you guys can hear me. I want to make sure that that's going through. Just shoot me a thumbs up or something or a cap on the stream just to make sure that things are going well. Perfect. Thank you very much, 1010. So, right off the bat, we see that Queen Jin coming out. Uh, two stones. Very, very good early play for, for beasts. Um, it, this, this list, I'm interested to see how, how it does against the, the 28 regalia list, especially since he's starting with Arla. Um, pretty unusual uh, to main that, but I think Arla is very good for the 28 regalia list right now. Um, so it's interesting to see what he decides to go with. So reveals off the uh, he reveals Scythe, Livy, Artemis, and Mary Bell, and a Cheshire Cat, which is going to go to the bottom. Uh, obviously, he's paid 200 life twice on that, so he should be at 36, 3600 life. So we'll see. That Artemis comes out, it's gonna get those four counters. Um, Levith Leviathan comes out, Mary Bell, and a Gleepnir. Uh, and might as well play everything, right? Uh, I think it's kind of interesting that he decided to play all of those regalia so early. Um, honestly, I probably would have waited uh, and could have you know, tricked his opponent into thinking maybe he had some stuff that he didn't, um, but he went ahead and went for it. Uh, we'll see how it how it plays out because now uh, now Caleb knows that the combo is coming, so he has a little bit more time to prepare. Um, as a Sacred Beast player myself, not having a not seeing a Cheshire Cat or something like that on Caleb's side is going to be tricky, especially because of that Gleepnir. Um, it's just going to make it. He's, it's going to put him in a spot where um, Gleepnir is going to be able to to make things happen, and that damage is going to be able to go through. But then again, also, Arla has flying, so that helps him a lot. In terms of uh, what new decks are around, um, I'm a huge fan of Sacred Beasts, as anyone can tell you. So I'm very, very pumped to see uh, Caleb first, you know, round one, that beast list coming out. Very, very excited about that. Okay, so I uh, can't remember its name, but that's the beast that pumps something else up when it comes into the field. So now we have that 1,000 strength Queen Jin. Unfortunately, because of that Cheshire Cat, it's going to be able to block it. Um, so he's not able to get that pressure in. So that damage is not going to happen. So Caleb leaving one stone up puts us... Going to Alex, who can J activate and will have the stuff that he needs for swiftness. Um, this could be a very quick game one. We'll have to see. Uh, oddly enough, um, the one thing that the Arla list does have that it doesn't have that other lists do is the fact that he has to rely on the bow in order to kind of do the, the blocking shenanigans. Um, but with flying, you kind of get around that. So it's, it's a personal preference trade kind of thing. So we see those draw phase, you know, draw phase taps. Let me see, still thinking about if he's going to do anything in the draw phase. See the untap. And moving in, and there's the Excalibur as well. So just lots and double gleep there. So lots of regalia, staring down a lot of regalia there. It's going to pay. Uh, the 400 to uh, flip his Arla, puts him down to 32. <coughs> um, so now Arla's got that flying, he's got swiftness, he's got target attack, he's got everything, and he's got a lot of additional damage ready for him. Uh, I honestly hope for um, for Caleb's sake that he has a uh, that he has a crime and punishment right now, um, because cr uh, crime and punishment at this very moment. Um, even with that Mary Bell out, will kill, uh, will kill Arla. Um, even 
you know, we'll just hands down kill Arla. And so as long as Caleb can survive this first opening lobby, uh, if he does have that crime and punishment in his hand, then it's very quickly going to end, uh, end badly for Alex. He can give Arla regalia, uh, uh, imperishable, but it's going to set him back a ways. You see that attack come in. Uh, he's got an additional 600 damage coming in, so that puts him at 1,500 because of all the regalia. Decides to just take the 15. Um, so it's going to put him down to 25. So, kind of rough shape already to just take that much damage right out the bat, but I mean, not a not an impossible position to come back from. Ah, you're right. You were right on that G Gray. He does have the Percy. I forgot about the Percival. Thank you for pointing that out. Saturday, what are you talking about? So, the, th the trick here is with that Percy out, how does he get enough damage onto that Arla to kill it? Um, he essentially has to try to, to take out the Percy, survive one more hit, and then kill, um, which is not a good position to be in, really, uh, for a deck that is more definitely more mid rangey, um, like like our, uh, like Prisia decks. So I see. Uh, three rapid growths in his hands. Um, that, that is a lot of, that is a lot of pump pressure. Um, one thing that he probably could have done, uh, really, is use one of those rapid growths in the draw step to get a stone, or to get a pump already. Um, and then, you know, done some other things to, uh, to ramp up. Um, to get more to get more stones and to use those rapid growths a lot uh, to pull some tricks uh, and he might even still be able to kill that Arla um, especially since he has the Artemis he decides to flip so Prissia is now on the board um, because of Prissia's effect Prissia is just a 1k 1k um, so the, the the thing is with the with Prissia yeah it's hard to see they're checking with the stamps so, um, based on the effect, Prissia, uh, Prissia gets different effects because all of his resonators are green. He's just going to be she's just going to be a one k one k. I don't really know why uh, why he did that. Um, felt like that was kind of an interesting play. I feel like he might have uh, been able to um, do something to Arla or push through a ton of damage and maybe even finish the game. Really, I think that if this had played differently, that Alex might have been even unable to put enough damage on board. Um, so let's the beaver hit go through. I forget how much damage that guy does, uh, and then takes a 800 from that. Can you guys tell me uh, how much attack it? It's a six six, I believe. So that's a 1400 damage to Alex, putting him down to 18. If I'm wrong, let me know. I'll fix it. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it is uh, 1,800 damage, or 1,800 life left for Alex. Um, I feel like I feel like he could have used those um, could have used those rapid growths in his hand to actually end the game that turn. Um, paying a white, and now we have that queen's butler. Yeah, I, I definitely think that a uh, different play with those rapid growths probably could have ended the game actually that turn. Um, simply because he has the Artemis yeah, bow, so this would have been able to put a ton of damage on board. One second, guys.
So, yeah, with the Artemis, you had three rapid growths. That would have been 1,200 damage. Could have activated them all again, put in an extra uh, 1,400 damage on board, or 1,600 damage on board. Literally could have um, could have closed out the game with that. I don't know why he decided to do that. Um, but decides to go ahead and just uh, ne ends the turn, and Alex takes it. So we go on to the next game here. So we'll see what these guys do for their siding. Oh, she was already here when the message came in. So there you go. Moving into the next round, we'll see how the uh, how the stuff goes. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong on the math, there, guys. But if he, he had the Artemis, he could have done uh, one four potential rapid growth pumps. Um, and with the Artemis and the, his opponent was tapped out, he literally could have just swung in for lethal um, that turn. Again, I'm. I'm watching. I'm not. I'm not there. I'm not in the position, so I don't know what's going on exactly. Um, but I feel like uh, if that had been played a little bit differently, Caleb could have still taken it. So I see, looks like that Kane is potentially coming in for game two. Um, I see a red, I see a red package coming in uh, from Caleb's side. I think, I think the thing is Caleb just needs to put a lot of pressure on Regalia, put him to a point where um, if he doesn't decide to swing in for lethal, like if, if Alex swings in too soon and doesn't get lethal, um, that Caleb's in a position to be able to push back for lethal next turn. Yeah, definitely. That's what I thought. Cardboard. It it would have been four, potentially even five. Um, you know, five rapid growths coming in. That would have been an extra two thousand damage, and uh, would have been unblockable because he could have used Artemis to kill Percival if it went to go block, and his opponent was tapped. Um, honestly, you know, the twenty-eight regalia deck is is hard to beat. It is it is consistent. It is good. It is powerful. Um, but combat it, it loses it, it has a hard time losing to combat tricks to opponents that can outplay it in terms of combat tricks pumping up here redirecting an attack there um sure arla has the advantage because he naturally has flying um but in the end you know you, you're you're still tapped out you're still you still have no no way to block so you have to just hope that your opponent can't uh can't respond um and that's what Prisia does best. Prisia does honestly. I think that Prisia does best in in combat tricks. Um, that's why it's one of my favorite decks. So we'll see how Caleb does. I hope he pulls this out. Um, but also, it's I think it's also very interesting that Alex is is starting with Arla. Typically, these players have been starting with Kane and Melgus, um, which I can see why. But again, when you have that flyer game one, it puts on a lot a lot of pressure um, that some decks just can't handle game one. So. Respect, respect Alex for making that call as well. In terms of, uh, to go back to what someone was saying earlier, in terms of what decks I've seen, uh, I know that we have at least one Rezard deck, uh, probably a Machina deck. We got a, a couple Prisia decks. We do have some Kane and Arla, 28 Regalia. It's going to happen. Um, but it's good stuff. We are doing five rounds today, by the way, guys. I think we had 20, either 20 or 24 players. Um, so we are going to be doing five rounds and then a t cut to top eight. I am going to be trying to convince them to play out top eight, um, but ultimately it is their choice. So I'll warn you now that, you know, we might end up splitting top eight. I know a lot of the players here though, and I don't think they're going to let that happen. I think a lot of them are going to want to play. So people keep pumping my camera. Sorry for that. I would assume Caleb's just checking his sideboard one last time. Make sure there's no switches he wants to make. Oh, 
Oh, that was one thing that was just pointed out to, pointed out to me. I forgot to put a timer on the round uh, for this game. So uh, from here on out, guys, if you guys want to know how much time's on the round, just let me know, and uh, I'll make it happen. And then from now on, I'll just talk about it every now and then. Uh, we just wanted to know uh, how much background noise are you guys getting? Uh, I'm in the other room, um, but I'm like around the corner, so we just wanted to see uh, what the sound pickup is like. Um, you know, if you're hearing a lot of extra sound, um, we just want to do a kind of quick check since we're so early in the event. So just give me a heads up on the on the chat what you think. Okay, sweet. Thanks for that heads up, guys. So we are moving into game two. Where is Matt Cosmore? He is not here today. Um, he had some other stuff that he had to go do, and so I am your force of will TCG US team admin commentation presence. Uh, I'm actually head judging today, too. I have a, I have a floor judge, my buddy Kyle Croft from... Uh, BC Comics Battle, uh, not Battle Creek, BC Comics Fenton, Michigan. Um, he's helping me out today. He's doing floor judging. So if I do have to step away, uh, I will um, to do a head judge. Um, but uh, that, that is the situation as it stands, guys. Mike Cosmore is also not here. Uh, neither Matt Cosmore or Mike Cosmore is in the building. So I already see in Cheshire Cat, uh, Leviathan, uh, and a Percival. Going into getting rid of two Justice of God Sword. Yeah, even down here though. And getting a Death Scythe and a Queen's Butler. So we have Death Scythe. Oh we switched. Okay, cool. So we did we did keep both rulers exactly the way they were. Um, I'm excited about that. So Death Scythe's out, Mary Bell's out. Um, and no first turn play. It's gonna be interesting. Um, to see how that works out. Uh, so that's a uh, cool stone because now uh, Alex has options to go for Cheshire Cat or for um, Percival. Uh, look at all those death ice. Obviously one of those is probably gonna go back on top. So cool thing, guys. Uh, Ellen Thomas from Voltage Games does a lot of cool card alters. She's here with me today. Um, she's going to be joining us for stream later. Um, so I'm excited for that. We're going to do some commentary together. And we got uh, got that flute. We got that horn. And now's the time when things can start going uh, Caleb's way. It's all about that pressure, really. Um, Zhu Kui, uh, the flame fire beast, uh, sacred beast, has to burn itself. Uh, and then swings in for 400. Who he, who he decide, Alex decides to take it. Putting him down at 36. Second stone comes up. Hey, feel free to tweet out the event, guys. We want to try to get as many people watching as possible. Um, nothing else really going on today, so... Make sure people hear it out. Now as that Percival comes out, just expecting that very quickly. Um, so we see per uh, Cheshire Cat, Cheshire Cat, Artemis, Death Scythe, Mary Bell. Uh, I think that the option he has to grab here is the Artemis. Um, I, I think he's got to get that diversity out. Because um, Mary Bell is not really going to help him. Honestly, he already has one, uh, and I think that uh, Caleb already knows that he's not, he doesn't want to try to deal damage to Alex's Arla. It's, it's really no point there because he can just pump it up. Yeah, grabs the Artemis. I think that's just the better call there. Um, getting those counters, being able to pull combat tricks helps defensively as well against uh, Caleb just in case something comes out of nowhere.
Taylor, I'm not going to shut up. I'm doing commentary. That's what I'm here for. There's that Mary Bell. Oh, and he's going to already use the Mary Bell to pop the other Mary Bell. So that's interesting. I, I can see that. I can see the reasoning being for that uh, in the fact that he doesn't want that Mary Bell to pop specifically his Levitine. Um, because if that gets popped, then Arla's gets significantly slower. Now those death sites come out. And passes over to Caleb. Oops, see that rapid growth? Get a feasting stone. So feasting is actually an interesting call. Um, Uh, because the deck doesn't really run a ton of spells. But, I mean, ultimately, Caleb doesn't, you know, know that, so Caleb probably mains that in his list. But I think Feasting has gotten um, gotten much better. Um, there's a lot more spell shenanigans that's going to happen. There's, there is stuff that doesn't target, but I think control decks with all the different spells they have access to them now, thanks to Seven Kings of the Land, um, is just much better uh, right now to, to just have that in there. Plus, it's green, so counter spells are a thing. Sees that Zhu Kuei come in. Alex is thinking whether or not he wants to block. He decides to take the damage. So there's another 400 damage to Alex, putting him down to 32. See that Justice of God Sword and the Queen's Butler. All those death slides got tapped, so now they get pumped up. Free 600 extra attack and defense for the wonderful Arla. Again, two, two rapid growths. Potentially can turn into four rapid growths, so it's potentially 1600 damage. So I'll have to see what happens here, because the Levitine hasn't been put out yet. Um, Alex can essentially play every single card in his hand right now, um, but then he'd have to wait one more turn for Arla. So he does decide to tap, hits that Moonstone. I think that was the better call for him, really. Um, Arla, Arla can wait a little longer before it comes out. Out comes that Queen's Butler. And then... Uh, I think he's going to decide to probably pass at this point. Yep. Moving on to Caleb. Draws into, looks like, another Mary Bell. Um, so one thing to note is now that there's a Fire Resonator on board, Prisia can gain Swiftness um, if it comes out. Um, see another Death Scythe. Two stones get out for Mr. Beaver. Gonna pump up Zhu Kuei. So now it's a 6 6 and is now outside of Artemis' range, which is very good for it. Also, there's those rapid growths, which also keep it out of that range. See that 600 damage come in? Let's see if he decides to do anything about it. Oh, right. Again, I forgot that it prevents swiftness as well. Thank you for that. So we see the Justice of God Sword coming out on the Zhu Kuei. Thank you, Maiden. I, I keep forgetting that part about Scythe. So Justice of God Sword, see the rapid growth to pump it up. Um, so now it is a 1,000-1,000, and he blocks it with a Cheshire Cat.
We're gonna try to get some variety on the stream, guys. Uh, I know that not everyone wants to see 28 Regalia all day, and we do have some really cool lists out there. Um, we do have some really, really cool lists that I'm very, very excited to show you guys. Uh, in, in between rounds is when I will be going to go check the list and figure out where we're going for feature match next. Uh, I think, just like on my channel, I think that variety is important, and 20 Regalia all plays pretty similar, so. Uh, I believe we had either 20 or 24 people I can confirm here in a minute. Now that Levitine's coming out and Arla's coming out, so now we're going to start seeing, seeing pressure get applied very quickly. Decides to not swing in. That's very interesting. Um, uh, I don't really know why he decided to not. He has the swiftness. He's got the flying. Uh, he might be worried that there's going to be some more pressure applied next turn. I can I can see that. And so he wants to have that wall and guarantee a kill. Um, but ultimately, I, I don't. I don't necessarily see why he didn't just go ahead and take some damage. Excuse me. Oh, there I am again, guys. Can't have swiftness. Uh, this is what I get for not not playing in tournaments for quite some time. I forget things. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'll remember that Swite is... I'll, I'll, I'll learn it by the end of the day. I promise that Scythe is uh, no swiftness and no... And no... Uh, <laughs> and no imperishable. Be a, that should be a meme, DMO 73, you know? DMO, DMO 73. Big, big, uh, big YouTube star, can't remember what Scythe does. Hey, I play events. Just like people make mistakes when they're playing the game, people make mistakes when they're watching it too. 600, an extra 400's coming out now that we don't have the block. 1200 damage. Putting him down to 2000, not 20,000. Whoa. Do I even play this game? Yes, I do. Another pump. Another 400 damage. It'll be 1600 damage. Or 1400 damage, sorry, 1400 damage. That's his, uh, th that white card is his life track. He's where he's keep tracking paper. If there is a Valentina deck, I will try and get it for you guys next round. Ah, yes, the Justice of God sword. Maybe I should. So he's at 3,000 damage then. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being so great and helping point things out to me. She kind of sounds... Now, the problem is, he used that feasting 
Uh, so now, unfortunately, let's see. I'm trying to remember what he's seeing. Is it both players or your opponent's cards? It is your opponent's cards. So that is going to be a lot of damage. He hit two rapid growths for an extra 18, so 1,400 damage. I'll put him down to 16 if he's down there. He decides to block it, so none of that damage is going to go through, which is really unfortunate. Plays that little Herald of the Beast Lady. Gets another creature out on board. So because of the way that that worked out, um, having to use having to use those uh, sites, it does actually make it so that uh, Caleb could possibly survive one more turn. Um, so that's good to see uh, that Caleb could could possibly have another turn to to make use of. But it still is going to put him in a lot in a position. So there's. So, uh, see, one, two, three, four, so an extra 800 damage, so that's 16 damage to Caleb. Putting him down to 24. Uh, this version of the, this version of the regalia list I actually really like. Um, it, I don't think it's quite as... Uh, ag aggressive as like the cane list. Uh, I think it is more of a player who wants to kind of honestly interact with their opponent a little bit more. Uh, I like the fact that he's not just straight pushing for tons of damage all kinds of time. Is he a 25? I'll fix that, guys. There you go. Thanks, guys. See that 400 damage from the beast come through, 600 damage from the beaver go through. And then he's not going to pull a trick there. Let's put another 2,000. Swing in with that 400 from Zhu Kuei. Well, the one thing is, too, they both have scythes, so neither of them can gain Imperishable. He's going to pump up the Zukwe in response to no blocks. Uh, and then in response to that, it's going to get shot with the bow. Um, so it is going to get killed before, um, before the Rapid Growth can actually get put on it. That Rapid Growth still needs to be removed from game, though, um, once they decide to, to change the... Once he decides whether or not to respond to it. Yep, there he goes. It does remove it. So, good game state handling from both players. So this is a pretty bad position for uh, Caleb to be in, just because that Arla is going to get very, very large very, very quickly um, with all those regalia uh, and with no way to really kind of protect it. 
or, or stop it from getting that that pump or put on the extra damage. Um, Alex, Alex can pump up uh, Arla large enough to finish off the game next turn. However, you know, we see, you know, who, who knows what's going to happen. And we see that thunder in Caleb's hand. Uh, that pretty much seals it that it's not really going to be possible. Um, sadly enough. If he had a blue resonator to be able to give Prissy a flying, um, it probably would have been possible. Um, but ultimately, again, that he doesn't even have a red source to be able to play the thunder. So all those are going to get tapped. So now Arlo's got an extra 600 strength on him. So he's at 15 already. And then can go up to 21. Queen's Butler makes him untargetable. 21. Up to 2100 strength right there. And then those two to pump him up to 25. Um... And that's just, that's exactly enough for lethal with Arla. Um, so 2,500 damage to Caleb. Caleb has no way to respond. Uh, no way to respond to it because of the flying. So this is interesting. He's giving it hexproof and pumping up his... Yeah, and then, yeah, there it is. So Caleb takes it, guys, um, just because of the fact that uh, there was no flying. There was no way for um, for Caleb to put enough damage on board. Again, he, he missed lethal game one, but that's just how it is. So um, we'll be right back in a little bit, guys, with uh, round two. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change some stuff up, and I'll, I'll see you guys then. So until then, I'm um, going to go on mute, and we'll see you guys next round. Thanks.
I'm just updating names real fast so that we can... Yeah, that's fine. I'm just getting some names in real quick and then we'll get started. So, uh, sound should be good. Make sure that's all good. Uh, give me one second to let Future Match know we're good. And I am joined by the wonderful, introduce yourself. Ellen Thomas, hi, how's it going? Yeah, so Ellen, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Good, glad to have you be here. How's the card altering business going? It's going okay. Good. Yeah, just been busy with school. Yeah, for sure. So we have Rezard versus Abdul. This is, this is gonna be sweet. I'm really pumped about this. The two big dark rulers going on right now. I haven't seen Abdul in a while. Yeah, I, I was really surprised. We actually have two Abdulists here today. Oh, that's, so that's, that's really cool. sweet. Um, first off, uh, Josh's, Josh's whole thing is Res Arts. He wants to mill stuff to the grave. Uh, I helped him playtest this list actually. This is a really fun list. Uh, he, he's, he's tweaked it around a lot. I'm really excited about it. Oh, now we have that Gruz Valesta. <laughs> Gruz Valesta comes out, so Abdul is, is possible. So let's see. Here, I'll adjust this so you can see a little better. Better? Can you see the screen a little more? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Just looking at the comments. Yeah, so we have that. Oh, there's Scion of the Dark Lord. So what's going to be happening is Josh is going to gain 4,000 life or 400 life from that, and then uh, Trevor is going to be losing 400 life. So a very quick little switch, um, while also putting pressure on the board. Very good card for darkness for sure. So this is very interesting. This, Trevor Trevor seems to be playing a very like reactionary game. Yeah. So I'll have to see how this list really plays out, because I know Josh's list, and if he gives him enough time, Josh is going to run away with it very quickly. Yeah. The flame of the Outer World. And, yep, and there's that Arthur coming out. Yeah, that... Josh is already in a really good position having that Arthur out, because um, it's never going to die, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, this would be a good time for Abdul, I, I would think, Trevor, being able to blank... Being able to blank uh, Arthur, I think, would be pretty helpful, yeah. you know. Um, but it doesn't detract the fact that Arthur is a 1,000-1,000 just by himself. Yeah. I can't see... I see that Artemis on board, too. I can't see Trevor's hand. I'm going to look at his list real quick here. It looks like kind of a traditional black-green Abdul, you know, black-green-red Abdul list. Uh, find it here real quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So oh, he's going to deactivate his Abdul? Yeah, get pretty good. Pretty good thing for him. But again, that very reactionary play. Yeah. I wonder, just, is his hand nothing but counter spells and kill spells? Because if that's the game that he's playing, I think Josh is going to have the advantage. Because Josh can manipulate stuff from Grave. Mm -hmm. I mean, a J activation from, uh, honestly, a J activation from Rezard um, with the hand that's going right now would probably kill Trevor. Because he could completely deplete Trevor's hand. Yeah, I and can then, see that. And then Trevor just can only uh, hope to get a Necronomicon. So there's a thousand damage right there, too. Right. From, from uh, Kane, or sorry, Arthur. <laughs> so going down to 26. See that knight again, Mullen again, more stuff to the grave. Get another stone. Pass turn. Drew a thunder. Did he drew a thunder? Okay. I think so there's, so. there's something. Uh, yeah, this looks like a pretty standard, um, pretty standard at dual list, just with, you know, regalia and stuff like that to kind of round out the counter package. I almost feel like it is... Yeah, looking at this list, the reason why we're not seeing any resonators is because Trevor only runs seven. 
That's so weird. Trevor Trevor only runs seven regalia in this list. Uh, Mephistopheles and Feasting. That's it. You mean uh, Resonators, not Regalia? That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> Did I say Regalia? Yeah. yeah. Resonator, Resonators. He, he runs three Mephistopheles and four, um, four Feasting. And other than that, it's nothing but spells. Right. And Regalia, of course. So Mary Bell can become a Resonator as mm -hmm. well. But, but in a list like Josh's that can continually just put pressure on board with Resonator after Resonator after Resonator... I don't know if that spell is going to be enough. Cause, You're right. Yeah, because we have that Necronomicon out, which is yeah. cool, so you can start recycling, but... Like, it's, I don't think, like, Trevor's deck could be fast enough, like, even if he mm -hmm. had spells. Yeah, really, because yeah. he's... Cause, Not to, like, be a Debbie Downer or anything. Like, who knows? Yeah. Ooh, too spoopy, but, like... Va zombies are very fast. Mm -hmm. Like, deceptively fast, I, I think. And so now... If he if he can get make this happen, I see what he's doing. He's trying to kill that Abdul. If he if that Abdul dies, Josh just wins. Like because right. that Necronomicon is gonna force him to discard everything in his hand. And right. you can see his hand. It's like uh, he's got a Ixid, uh, double crime and punishment. Uh, uh, you know, thunder in there. Um, looks like a keen sense. Yeah. Like yeah, the yeah. He just Trevor Trevor knows that he's beat, so he's just gonna take yeah. the loss there. A deck that's just nothing but spells against a deck that doesn't doesn't ca doesn't care if you kill their stuff puts him in a very bad position, honestly. So we'll see if we'll see what he sides into. His sideboard package is just more spells. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting one. Um, I mean, kudos on him for trying to run Abdul. With Regalia, yeah, which is pretty cool because I haven't seen that. Yeah, I, I think that's really, really awesome. I, Again, this is one of the reasons. It was funny. I was already thinking that I wanted to put this the Rezard list on stream because you guys asked for it. And then one of you guys was like, one of them on the stream was like, oh, I really hope we see Rezard versus Abdul. And then I get the round pairing and I'm like, oh, it's oh, Rezard versus yeah, Abdul. Wow. <laughs> it's great. So really, really cool stuff. Um, if I was in, let's see, if I was in... Trevor's shoes. Uh, I just cited a crap ton of. I, I honestly, oh, you know what? I see what he does here. He, mm. he sides into. He's got a blazer and a Vlad in his side. Honestly, I think you have to hard side into blazer, like right now, because <laughs> you. Um, but either, uh, Vlad also, like really, because you can't stay with that duel. Right. Um, as Which is like super weird because why would you play Abdul in the first place? Yeah, I don't know. Um, the other thing is too, uh, people are talking about how he could just Zeke's the grave. Arthur's um, ability to recur itself is instant speed. Right. So if, um, if Josh has enough resonators in the grave, he can activate it once. Uh, Trevor could respond by Zeke'sing it, yeah. but then he could just activate it again and mill his graveyard anyway and right. still get the Arthur back. Yeah. Um, so, again, mm -hmm. I don't really, I don't really think you use Zeke's for the graveyard shuffling. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I definitely think that we're gonna see a Vlad flip from Trevor. I hope we see a Vlad flip from Trevor because if it's Abdul again. Uh, it's gonna be hard just know. because a lot yeah. a lot of zombies also um have have a lot of power like you you can't just outright thunder a lot of the higher end vampires like you have right. to use stoning to death you have to use flames yeah and when there's so many things out there that your thunder can't kill a deck that's only spells can only go so far yeah So we'll see what happens here. Because I also know that Josh... I like how the sleeves match the mat. Yeah, <laughs> very very crisp color. I really like that. This is my first time seeing the Mordred mat in person. Really? Yeah, it looks really crisp. Oh, I have it's... so many. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, I have Because, like, Paul keeps getting them, so we always have, like, like a whole bunch of them in our apartment. Like, a yeah. whole bunch as in, like, two. But, like, 
but still, because you get them and then move yeah. them and then get them and then so move we, them. So we, like, have, we already have, like, a small collection of playmats, but it's just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, but there yeah, it is. it's a really nice mat. Yeah, that, th- I can tell you right now that Josh is going to take this game. Because you see that Trevor didn't side out of Abdul. Yeah, I don't and and Josh sided into Blazer, so now Abdul's really one out. You know, um, right. was really his only one out is now turned off. Because if he flips, Blazer is is going to flip for free and kill him. Yeah. Um, so I, I think this is we're going to see a very swift, uh, very swift game happening here. I mean, we might be missing something. Um, yeah. I, I could be completely wrong, and something's going to happen, but I think this is definitely in Josh's favor. Oh, Grubalest already. More, more Artemis bows. Again, a very reactionary game. I just I wonder what the plan is here. Because, I, I, honestly, I think in the waiting game, Josh actually has an advantage. Really. Right. Because if all of his opponent's stuff is kill spells, then he just doesn't play resonators. Right. And just waits for his opponent to overextend and then kills. Yeah. Um, Death Scythe. Yeah. Death Scythe Blazer is out, and I, I'm looking at the list. Oh, yeah, uh, nice. And already... Uh, Trevor doesn't run anything that can give Abdul Imperishable anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let alone now that there's a Death Scythe on board. See that? More milling to the grave with the zombies. Yeah, when we first tested this list, actually, we weren't running as much um, mill stuff. Right. We were we were thinking that it, it could be really easily countered and, and stuff like that. But then yeah. we realized that because it's putting a resonator on the field and milling, it's worth it. Because like, yeah. you're... you're you're not like just committing to one thing. You're yeah. still putting pressure on board. So we see that soul hunt come out from Trevor. But again, you know, no amount of. And there's Arthur. We see the exceed. Arthur's just gonna be brought back to his hand yeah, and like... play next turn. Um, now here's the one thing. I wonder if Josh plays. If Josh plays Split Heaven and Earth on the side, that could just... Destroy him. That could be an outright, (laughs) just we're done here. Move on. Um, No, he does not. He does not play any splits on the side. Uh, Which I can can understand. Uh, He's probably expecting to play a lot of Regalia decks today, which are pretty low dual stone count um, and curve out pretty fast. Right. But like... Yeah, I'm I s- surprised to see, like, the variety that we have today. Yeah, 24 players, and I think it's only four or five are regalia, really. And I'm, I'm, I'm really good with that. Arthur's going to come back. Tap a bunch of stuff. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, it's just too spoopy for me. Pumped about the new Arthur we're going to get in the next set. We don't even know what he does, but I'm still pumped. Oh, I've been I've been called. Ellen, I leave it in your I, capable hands. Oh God! I leave it in the capable hands. Stream. You, you, I, you don't even need those because you can't hear anything. But oh, okay. <laughs> Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh, guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was called Jeremy normally. Uh, I'm back. ask the questions. Here he's back! Yay! <laughs> was there a question asked? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, we we were just a question on uh, on Soul Hunt and uh, Breath of God. If the minus two minus two still happens, yeah. Even if you don't don't kill the dude, and it does, because the effect resolves as much as possible. Right. Mephistopheles is out. Yeah. Yay. And now it's dead. No. <laughs> Yay! But, <laughs> so, he's gonna. He's gonna. See, that's a huge. Uh, having to lose a Ixied. Yeah. To and then just. And then, to death. oh my goodness. Yeah, because again, Josh can save all of his. Josh can save all of his kill spells for Trevor's monsters. Yeah. Which he has seven. Right. 
So, I mean, when you have a handful of kill spells and only seven things you have to worry about killing. Right. That, like... You, you are in a much better position. Yeah, and it's surprising that, like, one of his seven resonators is just quickly destroyed. I mean, so, I mean, Mephistopheles, before Seven Kings of the Lands... Um, was easily a win condition for certain decks. Right. You know, it was a it was a play Mephistopheles, um, protect it and, right. and, and win. And then you right? go. <laughs> and then you win because I mean, fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred. Josh took a thousand. Thanks, guys. Uh, I missed that while I was away uh, from the two targets. Oh, that's not ten thousand. And he's taken eight thousand, so he's down to three. Um, but with with cards like Soul Hunt, um, with cards like Valentina, uh, with cards like uh, just, just there's a lot of other stuff out there now that can handle meth right. very quickly. Right. Um, and so I think that like play, it, play, you can't just like play Mes Mephistopheles and just wait to grind it out because you're already going to be dead. Like the game already like got faster after mm -hmm. this hit. Yeah, but I think the, the cool thing is too, the game got faster, but also in a way that I feel like was still balanced. Right. So it's like see, there you go. Like feasting is dead. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Um, this is so sad. Yeah, it's it is it is what it is. Unfortunately, we can't really do much about it. Yggdrasil took uh, how many stones does he play? He has three stones left. What is he? Tra he's trying to grab feasting, but too little, too late, really. Um, it, it's five rounds. Dalti, uh, Daffy is five rounds today. Five rounds and cuts a top eight. Uh, but as I was saying, I think the way this uh, the way that the field. Tumped, bumped up. I, was like, I still think control decks and mid range decks and tempo decks are still very good. Right. But you just can't build them like you did. Yeah, you have to think about it differently now. Yeah, like, absolutely. I mean, to give Trevor some credit, he did put Regalia in the deck to try and counteract that. Right. I just don't think it was enough. I think, yeah. the, I think the, the main board, the lack of resonators, yeah. the relying on the Zeke's, the relying on the Hello. protect the meth game um, just didn't didn't have yeah as you say maiden of the of the uh fiends f uh, friends fiends maiden of the fiends tons of ramp um but no real place to do with it you know claims the outer world so no more damage to trevor and you're right he only has taken um soul hunt doesn't target so he should actually be at 35 I, I should mention that I, I forgot a couple lists, guys, actually, when I was telling you what we have. We still we also have a Machina deck, and we do have a Scheherazade player here today. Really? Yeah, we have a Scheherazade player list well, today. Well, that's old school. So that's, like, really, I think we have at least eight, maybe ten different main boarded rulers here that's at this nice. here at this area you know, for 24 people. Right. Like 24 people with that many different rulers, like, that's a really good variety. Yeah. I mean, obviously, at a 200-man regional, you'd expect to see something like that. But for a 24-man event, right? that's phenomenal. Makes me really excited. Well, what's the majority here today? Really, I don't think there's anything that has a list of... Uh, I think the thing that we've seen the most of is um, it, there are four or five regalia decks. Um, but some of them are Kane, and some of them are Arla, and some of them are Malgus. Um, there are a few Knights of the Round Table lists, uh, a couple Blazers, I think there's an Arla Knights as well, um, but, uh, really I don't think there's any list that has more than five, uh, more than five, like, the same kind of mm -hmm. list. I think we see a lot of variety. So let's see, we have Niflheim out, seeing a lot of counter stuff happening, Banishing Three, bringing back the Arthur, playing the second Arthur. This, this is... Savage. Because <laughs> yeah. he, he used Flames of the Outer World to destroy one of his res resonators, but it didn't matter because it had just come back. Yeah, that's the, I mean, that's the thing about Arthur is, you know, when the deck is already milling enough to the grave, Arthur just never, never is dead. Like, right. Arthur just keeps coming back forever. Um, and there's Meth, which is cool, uh, but again, those Arthurs are both 12-12 now because oh they goodness. actually because they actually pump each right. other up. Right. Um, and he's got the little red pier stone up there, so we can pump up that damage. And Niflheim pumps them up as well. So actually, both of those Arthurs have the potential to be 16. Right. And just outright wait. Hold on, so we see feasting happen in response to endless night. It looked like, and then 
Sony's dead death anyway. So Josh is going to take a thousand from targeting Mephistopheles twice. But again, it's not going to be enough because now we're going to see uh, if he pumps up. So this is already 1400. We'll see if he decides to pump. Oh, does Arthur pump up all darkness? If he does, then that's right. I forgot Arthur, I think, pumps up the whole board. Okay. So, I mean, that meph was still very big. But again, Stoning to Death says, I don't care. So, yeah. So he's gonna, he gets the first swing in. So that's a good uh, 1,400 damage, putting him down to 26. The second swing in, he lets that go through. So that's another 26, or another 14, puts him down to 12. And then uh, another 400 from the Scion. <laughs> putting him down to 8, and putting Josh up to 29. This is a very bad position for for Trevor to be in. Right. Um, yeah, and Trevor just knows it. So that's Josh uh, with Rezard Solar Flare. I didn't have enough room for it, but Rezard Flare. Um, taking it, so taking it 2-0. So, oh, why was Meph at 19? Oh, because so yeah. oh, Mephistopheles is 19 because... Uh, Arthur pumps up all resonators, all darkness resonators. He doesn't care what side of the board it's on. Um, so technically, because there were two Arthurs, that Mephistopheles was getting pumped um, twice but for 200 each time. So getting an extra 400, 400. Yeah, I'm confused. Like, I'm just like jgray 95 says, like, why did he stay with Abdul? That's so confusing. Yeah, it, I, don't, I don't know. Um, it could be just that uh, Trevor... Maybe wasn't you know maybe didn't think that Blazer was important, or um, or maybe he just knew that it didn't really matter. Right. That could also be that he knows that in the end that it didn't really matter what right. what he used. Um, so he just stuck with Abdul. Um, maybe for the tap effect. I don't really know. Um, we'll have to you know we'll have to go ask him and see. Yeah, but, twelve stone Abdul. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Abdul, Abdul players near the end of the first season were playing 11 and 12 stones. Okay. Some players were, um, simply yeah. because they would play their basic stone lineup and then um, and then play things like Gribblasto and Feasting. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. 12 stone, no creatures. Yeah, that's... If he, if he had played 12 stone Vlad with no creatures, maybe, because he has a mana sink right. to be able to spend all that mana during his yeah, upkeep and make a swing. Yeah, but he didn't side into it. He didn't so side into like... it. Because there were a lot of times where at the start of Trevor's turn, Trevor had like 10 stones up. Right. So that could have been a quick 1,000 point swing yeah. in Trevor's favor. But he didn't. Uh, he, he decided to keep Abdul. Um, and with no, with no Gretels, with no Elvish Priests and stuff, yeah. he purely has to rely on the tapping ability of Abdul to get stones right. and that blessing of Yggdrasil and yeah, it was, just, and I, I it was too slow. I think that's just too slow. Yeah, it's very, very slow. So oh. um, we're going to go for now, guys. That was Ellen will probably be back for next round. That was, yeah, maybe was or something. Or somebody else. Maybe we'll get Kyle in here for streaming uh, for doing some commentary. But we'll be back with uh, round three when we can. Thanks a lot, guys. See you.